Hey guys, it's Tamara coming back at you with another video. Let's go ahead and jump in to complete our conversation about pathological liars. Today, what I'm going to do is talk a little bit about five ways that I think that you can manage pathological liars. The benefit to you in this video is basically that you're going to be able to not only um, define what pathological lying is, but you're also going to be able to practice some of these tools. Um, let me give you a little bit of background on me briefly and how I know how to deal with pathological lying. So when I was about three years um, into the field of counseling and psychotherapy, I decided to work in a cyber school slash probation detention center. And what I learned there was, oh my God, the kids that were there, they had one skill that stood out amongst any other skill. And sadly, that was pathological lying. They had no idea how to live in this world without lying. And it almost became like this compulsion, right? It was almost like this obsessive, compulsive kind of thing going on with them where they almost had to lie. And part of their identity was built upon lying. Um, and so that, that was just such a sad reality um, for me. And as a matter of fact, I worked there for about one to two years, I think, yeah. For about one to two years. And just the relationships that I built with those kids um, helped me see that most of their pathological line had no purpose. Um, it was almost like an impulsive thing. It came out before they could even think whether or not it was appropriate or whether or not they needed to lie. Um, other kids were strictly rebellious and oppositional. They had problems with conduct. And so, you know, they would lie just to get away with things. And then, I saw this small pocket of kids that didn't fit the description of impulsive, didn't fit the description of this is part of my identity, but they, they fit the description of just pure dysfunctional evil. It was, I like deceiving people. I like hurting people. I like, you know, getting over on them and manipulating them and, and seeing how far I can, can make them uh, go with me and trust me. And it really is a, a certain kind of evil when you think about it because you know, once you get someone to trust you, it's, it's really evil and, and, and just uh, beneath vindictive to hurt them because you gain their trust. So um, I started learning and studying this topic back then, uh, which was about maybe seven years ago. And I have 11 years in the field of counseling and psychotherapy. Um, and it was a pretty depressing reality that, oh my God, all of these kids, if not, um, you know, their parents also, uh, engaged in pathological lying. It, it was not only frightening, but it was disturbing on, on many levels. So I'm going to give you some tips, uh, some ways that I've learned to overcome people who attempt to engage me in lying. Um, I also want to give you uh, some ideas that might be helpful to you. And so you're going to find these in, inside of these tips. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. I wrote them down because my memory is horrible. Um, so the first tip that I want to give you guys is when you are dealing with someone who's a pathological liar, you want to make sure not to engage them. The moment you engage them, that's when their pathological behavior, and I'm not saying, um, you know, that they're quote unquote unstable or mentally ill, but their behavior in and of itself is pathological, right? It's unstable, it's ill, it's backwards, it's right. So individuals who engage in pathological lying and you sense they're lying to you, don't engage them right? You don't have to respond to their lie. You don't have to disprove it. You don't have to argue and fight with it. You don't have to call them out on it at that moment, right? You want to be able to receive what that person is saying. Think about it, register it in your heart and in your mind and decide what you want to do from there. But when you're dealing with somebody who's a pathological liar, the last thing you want to do is engage them. Don't engage, disengage completely. Um, the next thing is call them out. You can say something such as, I don't believe you, or I don't believe that, or I have a hard time believing that, you know, or you can say something not so confrontational, like, um, are you sure about that? That feels a little strange, right? Or you could maybe say something like, um, I'm giving you time to tell me the truth. I'm, I'm really hoping you're telling me the truth, but 
If you're not, I'm giving you some time to do so. Um, usually putting people on the spot like that, they either wiggle or squirm, or you know, they look like they're trying to figure out what to say. Uh, pathological liars, in my previous video, I'm gonna post it in the description box for you. If you didn't see it, I encourage you to check in. But in my previous video, I said that pathological liars do things that we don't expect, right? We expect them to squirm in their seat. We expect them to, you know, their eyes to dart all over the room, right? But pathological liars have learned how to survive by lying and so they're going to give you everything that you're looking for to kind of throw you off okay but there are some pathological liars who do squirm and you can catch that if you look really closely um, typically they're good at eye contact because they're, they're narcissists and they're sociopaths so they're good at eye contact they're good at body language you know they know how to get over on you um, but what I want you to do is tap into your internal sense right what are you sensing from this person do you feel uncomfortable do you feel threatened and if so why and is it because this person is lying to you why once again because we know you and i both know the most pathological liars don't just lie once they lie multiple times and about multiple things um so uh i basically what i'm saying is call them out right but choose the right time and then choose the right method of calling them out okay um i had a professor who was so, so awesome when i was in college um and he was the best professor that i ever had um he taught me all that i know about um, dealing with criminals and dealing with juvenile delinquents and dealing with people who are manipulative and sneaky and and uh, violent and one of the things he used to tell me um, I would ask him um, I would say professor what do I do when I'm face to face with somebody who's clearly lying to me and manipulating me and what he would say was this I know exactly what you should do and he was so interesting because I used to be like oh, tell me more you know and he's like I know what you should do play Columbo and I would crack up and I would be like he's not taking me seriously at all and he would say no seriously play Columbo and what he meant by that was be wise right come across as unassuming come across as confused come across as stupid and out of touch right because that's when you can catch them my great-grandmother used to say um <laughs> she used to have all these really abnormal sayings because she was my granny but um she used to say you have to act a fool to catch a fool i would put that right over here because that's the most confusing thing i'm sure you've ever heard you have to act a fool to catch a fool and i used to be like okay what does that mean and it was the same concept of play colombo right you have to sometimes act as if you're unaware in order to achieve what it is that you're trying to achieve. And it doesn't mean that you're being manipulative and unethical. It just means that you understand how to play the game. And if you're sitting across from somebody or talking with someone who's a pathological liar, I think you should have permission to play that game. And sometimes you have to act as if you are unassuming to get what you know is truth. Okay, so keep that in mind, guys. The next one is don't believe anything the pathological liar tells you until it is confirmed. I encourage you that if you have a pathological liar in your family or your friend group or one of your coworkers or even your boss, don't believe anything they say until it's confirmed. Um, I think we get into traps when we go off of face value and we overly trust that person and we know what they're saying is truth and gold, right? That's where we get in trouble. And that's where we begin to threaten our own reputation. And we also begin to threaten our own sense of stability because what we strongly believed is now false. And so now I have to figure out in my mind, how could I miss that? And now other people are gonna think that I was in on the lie, right? so it just snowballs so i think the most important thing in this you know fourth tip is do not believe anything until it's confirmed it protects you and it protects everybody else okay last but not least guys don't argue or fight with the pathological liar when you argue you're really trying to say i know the truth and i'm going to wrestle you down to the ground and you're going to tell me the truth and that never really works keep in mind pathological liars are typically narcissistic they're sociopaths they don't have empathy, they could care less. You arguing is like having an argument with yourself, right? Don't be confrontational, it's not worth it. Um, you're better off to just know the facts, have the facts if you need to prove them, and be silent, right? You know who that liar is. You don't need to prove to that liar that you know who they are. 
they don't really care to be very honest. They do what they do because they're who they are. You just need to be over here, you know, navigating the information that you have, knowing that this person is untrustworthy, knowing that you're going to need to back yourself up with this person and moving on with your life. Okay. That's all you need to be concerned about. Don't engage, don't engage, don't engage. All right, guys, so thanks so much for being with me today. I want to post all my information at the end of this video. I encourage you to give this video a thumbs up. I honestly appreciate the thumbs up. What it does is it pushes the video um, to the top of the search results in YouTube, and that allows other people to gain access to this video. So I ask that you give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful to you. I also encourage you to just subscribe. I can never say it. I always fumble this. Subscribe. I think it's over here on this side of the screen. Subscribe. If you want to keep up with the videos that I post, I post them Mondays and Fridays and you will get direct notification that the videos are available to you. We're going to talk about something new next week. We're not going to talk about relationships for a while. We're going to jump into the topic of trauma. And I think this is important. It's my specialization with adults, kids, and teens. And I think this is something that we really need to talk about. All right, guys. So thanks so much. And I encourage you to put some comments down in the comment comments section ask me questions um you know um give me topics that you would like me to cover i will definitely take them into con oh, take them into consideration i watch this part of my videos up every single time um i think it's because i'm just tired i talk myself into fatigue uh but <laughs> whoa but um anyway guys so i look forward to talking to you next week um because we're going to jump into the topic of trauma so stay tuned for that but in the meantime guys i wish you all the best and i'll talk to you really really soon bye